All right, in this video, I'm going to actually going to talk about poly uh, dividing polynomials using synthetic division. You may not be able to see it. The glares are changing in the, the room I'm shooting in, so sometimes it's tough to see. But uh, the thing about polynomial division with synthetic division is it's way easier assuming um, you're doing something that involves uh, the type of factor that's x minus something. or x plus something. If there's a number like a 4x here, you really can't do synthetic division, which is kind of lame, but whatever. I mean, you're kind of trapped into it. But if you have a really long one and it's just this x minus term, if it's one of the terms in it, it makes your life much easier. So let's look at one. Now, if you saw the video that I made on uh, regular long division, let's see if I can bring up part of it so I can make my point. Um, like at this point, I would do, well, what goes into 3x to the third? It, you have to multiply it by 3x squared. So when I did that, it gave me plus 3x to the third, and then plus, uh, this times this gave me plus 6x squared. Uh, the issue that I'm trying to bring up here is this was a subtraction, so I went ahead and changed the sign here as well. Even if it had been minus, I would have put plus. That way it's a nice visually appealing idea. Synthetic division works on the same basic uh, concept in the sense that this minus 2 in synthetic division, I want to change it to a positive 2. So this is what it ends up looking like. You take your whatever the little dividing number is, the x minus whatever, x plus, you want to change it to the opposite sign. Then I want to put the coefficients of the numbers in the original um, polynomial. So 1, negative 4, 6, and negative 4. Pretty simple stuff. From here, there are a couple steps. The first step is to bring down the initial um, coefficient, so bring down the 1. From there, I want to do the positive 2 times 1. So that comes up here, and it gives me 2. Um, at that point, all I do is uh, see, look what the signs say, and it says negative 4 plus 2, so I put negative 2 right here. And then I do 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. Bring that down, gives me 2 again. And then I do 2 times 2, which is, of course, 4. So you get that nice, um, these cancel scenarios. So you end up with a, uh, with a 0 here. So that's actually uh, a, a good thing. That's what you want to have happen, because this section is my remainder section. That tells me what my remainder is. So what's left over, this would be my constant term. This would be my x section. These are my x squared. So I get x squared minus 2x plus 2 with a remainder of 0. So can I test my theory that that's what it is? Sure. All I have to do is take x minus 2 and multiply x squared minus 2x plus 2, x to the third, um, minus 2x squared plus 2x, minus 2x squared, minus or plus 4x, minus 4. So these are like terms. These are like terms. So x to the third, minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 4. So it started. It gives me the answer that it started out with. But, you know, that's kind of the setup for synthetic division. Let's do one more. I think, like, you can grasp it, just the expanded version. So when you set up the uh, synthetic, you want to change this sign, so negative 3. Then you want to start filling things in. Now, you'll notice there's no x term, and there's no x to the uh, second power. There's no x squared term. So what do you do with that? Well, I put a 1 here for the x to the third, and then for the other ones, I'm going to put 0, 0, and then 27. So, bring down my 1, do 1 times negative 3, and I get this. Then negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and I want to do uh, bring down my 9 there, and then you do 9 times negative 3, and you get negative 27, which is a good thing, because that means there's no remainder. So it should be x squared minus 3x plus 9. And can you test it? Absolutely. Go back in, just do a little uh, multiplying out.
negative 9x and 9x cancel each other out. x squared terms cancel each other out. So all I'm left with this x to the third plus 27. So it is correct. Um, that's your setup. If there would be um, some sort of remainder situation, this last line here would end up with a remainder. If I thought that I could get away with it, and I am going to get away with it, I'm going to make one up or have one up for a second that just has it. I found one in a book somewhere. Sorry to make this extendedly long. So x to the third minus 14x squared plus 51x minus 54 divided by x plus 2. You want to change the sign there to make it negative 2. Then you deal with 1, negative 14, 51, and negative 54. This is kind of a beast. This is not difficult. 1, and then you want to do the negative 2 times 1 here. And you get it negative 2. So combine these, you get negative 16. Then you want to do this times this, you get 32. Since they have the same sign, you want to keep them. So you end up with uh, 83 here. And then you want to do negative 2 times 83, and you get negative 166. And from that point, you do a little combination of those two things. Negative 220. Now in this case, of course, here's my remainder. So my final answer is x squared minus 16x plus 83 with the remainder of negative 220. So it does happen that occasionally you'll get a nice remainder on there. I just want to show you that that actually existed. And uh, that's it.